Hello everyone! Today, Scorch Your Toys at AnyMoon.com is looking at the SP releases of Fext Hobbies Al One Armor, released in August 2019 for 47 spot 90 US dollars. These armor sets appear to only be available through Fext Hobbies website. If you're shopping for just about anything else, you can find what you're looking for and help this channel out by heading to Big Bad Toy Store through the link in the comments below. You might occasionally see these referred to as Series 2, even on Fext Hobby's website. But I suspect the accountant on the team made a last minute cost cut and reused the Series 1 box and these became SP releases. The contents are generally the same as they were in the AL-1 releases, with some minor tweaks we will be exploring in full detail. Note that the accessories, and even some of the armor parts, vary depending on which variant you purchased. We haven't quite hit Baskin Robbins levels, but we're now up to 11 different flavors to choose from. There are different gauntlets, backpack, weapons, and other accessories depending on the type you purchase, so review the options carefully. The instructions tucked in behind the yellow piece of cardboard beneath the trays has a full parts list. The SP instructions have been updated to contain the same info in fewer pages and shows the parts list specific to the three newer variants. In the first tray, you'll get the armor and its accessories, a pair of pilot seats, a neck cavity filler, and new for this release are backpack adapters for the Super Ostrich and Elint Seeker. In the second tray, you'll get the naked armor display stand, which will require assembly. There's also an adapter in this tray that you can use for connecting a fully armored up high metal toy to a Tamashi Stage Act display stand. To be clear, these parts do not include a Bandai high metal or high metal R toy they correspond to, nor do they include a Tamashi Stage Act display stand. Behind the second tray, you'll find the chain base, which includes a few option parts for stacking several bases on top of each other. With minor exceptions, the SP armors are repaints of Series 1, which I did a pretty deep dive on previously. Click the card now to see the original review, which contains installation instructions and compares the armor to Bandai's High Metal RGBP. In this review, we'll cover the highs and lows and compare the SP release to Series 1. The chain base isn't exactly the same as it was on the original AL-1 releases. There is now a zero in front of the number, and we also get these grooves in the corner which will allow you to connect a Fext Hobby display stand. The biggest change on the actual armor is in the chest, and from the top you can see the changes made to fit those two-seat versions. So you have a much wider top, a little cutout here on the edge, Flipping the toy around, you have a larger cavity down the center. And then even looking from the bottom, you could see there's a little bit more rounded bottom to that chest armor. And those changes combined allow this piece to fit on any type of VF1, whereas this piece only fits very snugly on one-seat versions of the VF1. Here we have the SP version on a one-seat toy. There's the Series 1 also on a one-seat toy. You can see the SP version, although it is more universal, only has slight gaps in the front of it, no gaps on the front of the Series 1. So I guess if you only have one-seat Valks and are really concerned about little teeny tiny gaps in the front, then perhaps sticking with Series 1 is for you. Otherwise, SP now universal, and I don't think it's a major detraction from the look. Uh, other changes you're seeing between these two toys are just option parts, so the missiles and the Gatling gun, also available on Series 1 depending on the flavor you pick. The last big change for the SP version are these little extensions that come off the Super Ostrich or a Lint Seeker, which has a different backpack from the normal VF1 toys. That backpack uh, comes in at an angle, and so if you were to have regular boosters, just like we do on this single seat version of the toy, they would be angled way back. So instead, these adapters allow you to get the fast packs or these back end strike cannons, whatever you've got, at the proper vertical stance, even though that backpack is at a slant. Also a slightly different size, I believe. Speaking of size, one thing that has been a little bit tricky for me is the fit of these backpack boosters into these extension pieces. They were just ex extremely tight to the point where I thought I might break something. So I did file down the pegs on these boosters just a teeny tiny bit so they actually now slide in and out of these extension pieces without feeling like they're getting completely stuck in the process. 
But there you go. You could see when we use the extension pieces, you can't really use the support that comes out of these backpack boosters. So there you could see the support coming forward on the one seat version of the toy and that holds the backpack in place and looks good. Uh, on the two seat version, if you're using the extensions, those boosters are further set apart right around the shoulders and they can't come out and be supported by the back anymore. It hasn't been a problem for me. It does create a slightly different look so that might be something that either you like or dislike. Another issue when using those extensions to get further out is that it's gonna put that strike can in right on top of the shoulder armor. So you can see the VF1D on the left doesn't need the extensions, that cannon comes right over the chest and it doesn't inhibit opening that missile bay at all. Whereas on the Alint Seeker I have now on the right, you would have a little bit of a conflict going on with that strike cannon and the missiles. Now you could easily just not put the strike cannon as low down, bring it up a little bit, and it's gonna be fine, but it's just something to consider. Inside the box, you will find a neck cavity filler that looks like this. We could just take our toy, bring the head all the way forward, and slot that piece into position, bring that latch back. If it's a one-seater, those little pegs in the back will actually go into the latch. Bring the backpack back up, put your head back down, and there you go, now you've concealed that cavity. You might be thinking, okay, but on Bandai's newer high metal R toys, they give us a cavity filler and it actually wraps around to the front of the chest, so isn't that superior? Well, in some ways, yes, but the AL-1 armor needs to latch into these front cavities, and that's why this piece isn't doing that. And also older high metal R toys or high metal toys didn't include these cavity fillers. So it's a nice pickup for any of those. Now, if you do have your AL-1 armor and you've got that neck cavity filler in there, you can put in a seat. There's two different seats. So you can put in a seat there and recreate the one pilot coming out on your one seater versions. Or if you have a two seater version of the toy, you can take both seats, combine them, put the pilots in, put them up top, and make it look like they are escaping a Batroid mode vehicle. So it's a nice little pickup. Here is the chain base that came with the original Owl Series 1. This is the chain base that comes with the SP releases, and I've linked these together horizontally, which is a nice function that you can do. You also get the parts where you can make the roof into the floor of another one and put this pillar in the front to help support the weight. And then this could go on top like that, so to speak. And that would let you go vertically. And if you were gonna have something like 11 Al ones you could have a pretty impressive display where you do something like you take this rack, which is also included, you deck it out with all of the armors. And then imagine a hallway of just all these armors going down. That would be pretty slick. Now, another thing that this rack allows you to do is to reach in here and take these pieces out and move them to an exterior peg. And so when you have all of the armor on there, you can also slide these forward and back. When you have all of the armor on there, you can go ahead and make a display where you have a VF1 looking like it's putting the armor on or is ready to put that armor on and roll out. Now, my only knock with the chain bases is that they are exactly the width you need for when you have just one of these racks, which I knock loose there, on the chain base. Once you start doing things like extending things out, uh, the chain base becomes too narrow for you. So that's my only knock on it. It is really cool otherwise, even if you have the armor on a toy, you could see one chain base just isn't gonna be sufficient anymore. But otherwise, really cool accessory, and it does add to the fun factor. Like the Series 1, you have a lot of opening missile bays. The chest has a little slot underneath that lets you get a fingernail in to help open that up. And you have that on either side. Now on the Owl-1 armors, these missiles and all the other missiles are red, where they are now sort of tennis ball yellow-green on the SP versions of the toy. You saw earlier, we do have those missile bays inside the shoulder compartment as well. Moving down to the legs, these ones are a little tougher to open, but we have 
Missile bays on either leg. There are missiles pointing front and back, similar to what you'd see on a GBP. And then we have this missile bay higher up on the calf. All that pretty cool. You do have articulated nozzles on these back boosters as well. The forearm armors are pretty cool. Now, if you have the Gatling gun, which the SP does, I think in every variant on one side, you can hook up the missiles that are included. The missiles have the ability to pop off individually. So if you're doing some sort of a diorama, that is available to you. And then they just plug in on that slot right there. Uh, on the other side here, we have also a slot right down the middle. So if you had a version of the VF-1 that has missiles, either TV or do you remember love style missiles, you can plug those in that middle slot as well, which is a pretty cool option to have. Or you can pop them off, obviously, put on the included shields like so. So pretty full featured set of armor. One of the things I love most about this armor is that it really doesn't inhibit your enjoyment of the Bandai High Metal R toy underneath, or High Metal toy. Uh, it doesn't interfere with the articulation of that toy. So you can still bring this arm all the way around. The armor is not going to conflict with that at any point. You still have full use of the elbow. So that's great to see as well. The only thing that's at all inhibited is bringing the leg forward. You can see the top of the leg runs into those missiles, but you still have your knee behind that, which is gonna function just fine. And then coming forward, it's the wings that stop you, and you have that gear walk joint there, and you can see the knee cap on the armor not conflicting with the forward range of movement of the leg. So you can bring the leg way forward, way out. You can still use that hip extension within the high metal R toy to get a really wide stance and put this thing into some really dynamic poses, despite the fact it's got this huge armor on top of it. So you can have a lot of fun. It makes a very good display piece. I really like the Fext Hobby Owl 1 and feel the same way about the SP versions. I'm not bothered by the minor concessions to make the armor universal, but I only own one Super Ostrich and a Lens Seeker, so it feels silly to replace their custom fast packs. If you bought an army of two-seaters, this might be a nice way to mix things up. Fortunately, that dark gray goes really well with just about every single seat release, so if you like the combination of parts offered here, then grab this armor for any high metal valk you own. Make sure you've subscribed and check out the full article on anymoon.com, and thanks for watching.